it's the end of the year and Cloud Imperium Games has released a letter from the chairman, Chris Roberts, on the CIG website. And in it, it details, you know, their sort of trials and triumphs from the previous year. A lot of stats about how much money they made and how many players have been in the game, which has all been huge. In the middle of all this, there's a section called Looking Forward, The Road to Alpha 4.0. And in it, he details a bunch of information of what their plans are and that they're going to be focusing on the new year. Um, which technologies are kind of in the way of making everything happen. And I wanted to sort of go through this a bit and sort of explain some of the elements that um, I find most interesting and sort of help explain why they are so important. So they say once they're back uh, in January after the holidays, they're going to be working on hardening up PEZ um, and getting the 3.18 patch out to live. As we know, it's been stuck in wave one for a while. And um, once they kind of get back, hopefully that will get a lot more stability. And they're also adding a bunch of quality life features, including the ability to choose which Pez shard you go into and they're making it so uh, currently if you're trying to get back onto the same server it'll try and put you in the previous one that you were on but if you don't want that they're going to be adding a sort of a matchmaking thing so you can wait until a server has a spot for you and you can go back in and be in the same shard. The reason that is, is because currently with Pez, if you're on a server and you throw a bunch of gear around on a planet and make a huge mess, the only way that you can get back in and see that mess still around is if it's on the same server. And that's where a bunch of the rest of this sort of um, letter from the chairman is really interesting. Um, they say the next step after this is to separate the replication layer and the in-memory cache that remembers all dynamic object state from the game server to have scalable replication layer workers that communicate the state changes between various game clients, servers, and the replication layer. And this is cool because when they say replication layer, that's pretty much saying all the objects and the, the mess that you're making uh, in that game session. Uh, so it's saying that uh, instead of it being connected to that server in in particular, it's going to be connected to sort of like a, a an extra list um, that will be offsite from that server. And so it means if you travel between servers, uh, it's going to be able to reference that and dynamically kind of take that information and, and write to it as you move from server to server. And here's where it gets interesting with server meshing. Uh, it says, this is very important for server meshing as universe state needs to be decoupled from server state. It will also make Star Citizen much more crash resilient on the client side as the server crash will no longer take down the replication layer as well, meaning that clients can stay connected while new server takes over with the last one left off. Now that's a huge one because that's talking about 30Ks. That's essentially saying, you could be playing and if something happens to the server, like it crashes or goes offline or whatever, you could just sort of wait there for a while and a new server would kick in and that replication layer, which has all your data of what you've been doing, where you are, where the things I've been placing around will kick in and be applied to that server and you just keep going. There's no more getting kicked and having to go back on and sort of restart everything, which is massive. And it continues. And this is where the entire article essentially peaks, <laughs> says we will start with static server meshing where different servers are assigned to simulate different entity zones in the star system. Entity zones sometimes referred to as local grids. At first, the servers will be bound to fixed zones, but we will quickly move to dynamic server meshing V1, where we assign servers dynamically to entity zones based on gameplay and simulation load. This will be much more efficient use of the servers in the cloud as you only need servers where the players are, whereas in static server meshing, you have servers assigned to zones, even if there are no players there. So that's saying that there'll be a server for a section of space, say a certain amount of moons or very like busy places. And if one of those go down or has, you know, 30K or whatever, then that means everything that has been happening on there doesn't just kick everyone out. That, that section of space will kind of like have a, you know, you probably have a little loading kind of icon for a second. It'll kick another computer on. It'll grab everything from that replication layer, all the data about all your stuff. It will copy that onto it. And then you'll just keep going, keep flying. And meanwhile, somewhere else in that same, you know, 
uh, galaxy, people will, won't even notice that happen if they weren't on those in that specific grid or part of the space at the time. And so a lot less 30Ks, a lot less interruption, a lot less ruined missions and things happening. Then goes on to talk about dynamic server meshing, which essentially is um, the ability to turn off um, or uh, allocate less servers to certain space um, or allocate more to some other places if there's it's more busy on there. But that's less important to us because the, the next bit after that is it says, once we achieve static server meshing, which is one before, we can open the universe of star system to other systems, starting with Pyro by having authority pass from one server to another. You'll be able to transition seamlessly without the need to log out of the game between star systems. So Pyro, if you don't know, is an entirely other system like at the moment we've all been playing in the stanton system that has you know all the planets that we know and love but the big the big interesting thing about star citizen we get more of these systems and a whole bunch more of these planets and pyro they're saying is going to be coming out the fourth quarter of next year but only once static server meshing is possible because essentially they're going to need a whole bunch of more computers to be able to run an entirely other uh, galaxy and system. They can't just keep adding more and more things onto the pile, more places to see, more, more AI being run by the same computer. They need a lot more computer power. And by splitting up how much of the work is done of each sort of section of space by having them all these different um, hosted on different servers, it means that that workload is spread around. And it's not such a big deal when the whole thing goes down because they can just have things boot up seamlessly. Now, this is the bit that has me, you know, not entirely confident that they're gonna have that done because that is a whole hell of a lot different technology than what we've already got going on. And as like they said, they were gonna have Pez in by the end of, you know, uh, before the holidays and stuff. And they don't, we're still doing PTU and all that. And like, I'm sure it's very close to now, but you know, Pez was a very odd technology and there were all sorts of problems and things that were gonna come up with it that were always gonna make it very difficult. Um, and CIG are notorious for this. The server meshing is, is a huge task. There's so many things that could go wrong. Getting them all to talk like that and kind of seamlessly kick back up and write the, these layers like um, confidently uh, is a pretty tough thing. And then adding a whole other system, like once that's on top, like that's a, this is a lot of work. Like if they get that all done and in by next year, look, I'd be very, very impressed. You know, I'm, I'm not, I don't, not putting all my my beans in, I'm putting all my beans in the basket that they're going to get it done. But you know, um, I'm excited for what it means and when this stuff does get done. It is next in line of what they are going to be working on. It's not like previous years where they promised that oh we're going to start on next year, we're going to start on next year. It's like this is you know they're gonna unless they spend the entire next year all just working on Pez. Like if it's that big a problem. It is like what they're going to be working on, but not, you know, knock on wood. And it finishes off with a bunch of their other sort of goals that they're planning, which should come. Remember, this is all after static server meshing. So we are aiming to put static server meshing and pyro into the hands of players in the fourth quarter of 2023. The large caveat with this goal is that complicated engineering work that involves a completely new paradigm requires a host of new backend services. The technology is hard to estimate and schedule accurately, which is why we haven't been hearing too much of it recently, as the issues and problems that can come up along the way are hard to foresee as no one has implemented this system before. The plans rarely survive contact with the users, especially at scale. This is, this is um, all just like making sure everyone's sort of prepared for the chaos that will definitely take place. Uh, this has been true for Pez, as it is no secret that we were hoping to have Alpha 318 and Pez release to live by the end of the year, as opposed to just the PTU. Delays in finalizing 318 and Pez impact the team's ability to, to start on the next stage, and we still have the unknowns of how Pez performs after months of heavy load and people seeing exactly how much space junk they can leave around. Beyond this, this is the, the other parts. Beyond this, there are a host of other exciting features and content we have planned for 2023. Pyro with its all sorted planets, moons, settlements, space stations, and all sorted factions and AI population being the headline. But we also will be rolling out the new item resource system in ships, which replaces the old pipe system with a much more dynamic and scalable system to allow for truly 
emergent behavior. And that's the stuff like the um, having like gravity and breathable uh, oxygen on ships and being able to control them, and essentially having like engineering, <coughs> engineering with sort of multi-crew gameplay, which is really interesting. Bounty hunting with a full tracking system and the ability to actively restrain and transport both players and AI, which we've seen uh, a bunch of pieces of uh, new weapons and bounty hunting sort of gear come in, like tasers, which are all kind of sitting in the code at the moment. Persistent hangers with freight elevators, allowing you to call up your stored inventory or place things into storage, um, which is to do with the cargo refactor. That's one big point, and that's also gives hope to seeing tractor beam. Uh, if we get that, we're definitely getting uh, like ship tractor beams in that year. Uh, towards the end of the year, we should see some more of the Squadron 42 related work arrive in Star Citizen uh, with more flexible player traversal, which is like the, the EVA kind of parkouring changes that we saw at CitizenCon, uh, especially on ladders and ledges, a greatly improved interaction system, uh, first person scanning, which is like, you know, when you scan in a ship, Essentially, we're going to be able to do that when we're on foot and it's going to highlight uh, like areas of interest or other, you know, AI in the area, sort of like a Batman detective mode from uh, the Batman games. <laughs> a new star map, thank God. MFDs using the more performant and flexible building blocks UI system. Hopefully that doesn't mean that it's going to disappear and not be, inv be invisible a lot like it's been recently in the uh, PTU. Uh, a much more deeper combat AI, which it'll be able to do with uh, uh, the server meshing once we have those um, more servers working and be able to have more CPU to make the AI not such a dumbass. Uh, now that the Gen 12 renderer is functioning in 3.18, the graphics team will work on multi-threading improvements and optimizations for the renderer, as well as hook up the Vulcan graphics API to it to unlock some of the performance gains that the Gen 12 renderer can provide, which that's interesting to me because I think a lot of people have said they haven't seen too much change from the Gen 12 renderer. And maybe they've sort of, once they've, they've realized that there's a few extra things they need to do to really get the best out of it. So hopefully we'll see some better performance changes there for lower end systems. Look, and that is the most interesting stuff sort of out of that letter from the chairman. It's very, it's, yeah, that's going to be the last kind of post we see from them for the year. And it's a seemingly pretty positive one for the start of the next year. It's that we're going to see updates to the roadmap soon uh, next year. I think January or early February, we're going to see they're going to really update it. So at that point, we'll see exactly what is on the roadmap, uh, what they've told the team everyone's going to be working on, you know, post the PEZ uh, introduction. And that's when we're really going to see like exactly kind of what we uh, can expect to get at the year other than what they've sort of mentioned here. And I'm pretty excited. Um, also, just wanted to say a thank you to everyone who has been with me here. I know I've only kind of been around here for about a month's time of posting this video on YouTube, but it hasn't gone. It's not beyond me how um, great you've all been uh, and seemingly very nice in the comments. <laughs> I know I'm a new creator, but uh, yeah, I just want to say thanks for the support. Uh, without you guys, I wouldn't have continued to do it and put as much work in as I have, but it's been a joy and, and a space where a lot of people can be quite uh, grumpy or salty. Uh, you guys have been rather lovely. So I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's been a great end of the year and hopefully I'll be here uh, at New Year's next year and still not being angry at the game so much. And hopefully we'll be in Pyro drinking Piptinis and welcoming the new year on our Banu Merchantmen and Polarises and all great ships that we want to be flying. <laughs> oh, I'm rambling. Anyway, thank you so much. You've, you've made the year for me. My name is Dead Leader and I'll see you in the new year. Space. It's cold and it's lonely. But you don't need to be with Dead Leader Merchandise. Merchandising. With Dead Leader Merch, you can represent Star Citizen without looking like a dog. Merchandising. Everyone will think it's for some sick band, and if they ask what Dead Leader is, you can just say, you probably wouldn't know him. 
and they'll think you're sick. Merchandising. So grab your Dead Leader merch today and support your favorite content creator. Me, Dead Leader. Merchandising.